Beloved of God, the same voice again we thank God that he speaks. His word is new every morning and so he speaks every day that we gain from his word. Let us continue in prayer. Father God, we thank you that we are still who we are, still speaking, still breathing. Thank you for every opportunity that you give us to interact with this word and we pray that you bless us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, pray the Lord. I thank our Heavenly Father for every opportunity and I thank everyone who keeps tuning in to listen to this. You give your time. I praise God for you. And even the teams that are behind these productions, we thank God that they are really supportive to the work of God. And so I appreciate every effort by the listeners, every effort by the producers, every effort, yes, by everyone to make sure that actually this is done. And so we continue thinking through our episodes and they have come one after another. Biblical personalities. We read about them in the word of God. And as always, what do you pick from every scripture that you read for your own good and maybe for the good of others that are behind you or besides you or in front of you, whatever they are. And so we continue with some figures in the prophecy of prophet Jeremiah. There are some interesting people here. They have done greatly. And one of them that I will come with now is almost a nameless person, but is described by the description of what it is. It becomes his name. And this person is called Ebed Melech. Ebed Melech. I'll do a bit of explanation about Ebed Melech in the book of Jeremiah. He's a character in one of in these chapters. And you shall read about him in chapters 38 and chapter 39. And I know that we actually were biblical readers, biblical lovers. And so when you mention this, someone can easily open their Bible. If it's not, if not now, then another time. Who is Ebed Melech? And what did he do? And what do we, what lessons do we pick from Ebed Melech? And um, he is from a royal palace in Jerusalem of King Zedekiah. Now, Ebed in Hebrew, Ebed in Hebrew is servant. Ebed, 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 servant. Melech, Hebrew, means king. Melech, king. And so this one, the name therefore is the servant of the king. The servant of the king. And when you are called servant of the king, is that your name? Well, it becomes your name because actually that is your title. And so this man is called Ebed Melech in chapter 38. And I just want us to read a few verses from there. Chapter 38. Because actually this gives us the basis of our interaction. 38, the Bible says that in chapter verse 1, Now Shephatiah, the son of Matan, Gedaliah, the son of Pashur, Juko, the son of Jeremiah, and Pashur, the son of Malachiah, heard the words of the, that Jeremiah was saying to all the people. Thus says, says the Lord, He who stays in this city shall die by the sword, by famine, and by, and by pestilence. But, the, but he who goes out to the Chaldeans shall live. He shall have his life as a prize of war and live. Chaldeans were the people that were attacking Israel at that time. And they were the ones taking the people into exile. And so Jeremiah was giving them an unpopular message and telling them that actually those who want to live, go along with the Chaldeans and you'll stay alive there. Even if the Chaldeans come and take the land, but you'll stay alive there. And some people are saying, how can we be taken away? But the message was coming from the Lord. And so verse 3 says, that says the Lord, this city shall surely be given into the hand of the, end of the army of the king of Babylon and be taken. Then the officials say to the king, because actually it was an unpopular message, how can you pronounce a message that was, that's a doom 
to the city, to the country. And so in verse 4, that the officials said to the king, let this man be put to death, for he is weakening the hands of the soldiers who are left in the city and the hands of all the people by speaking such words to them. For this man is not seeking the welfare of these people, but their harm. King Zedekiah said, behold, he is in your hands. For the king can do nothing against you. So they took Jeremiah and cast him into the cistern of Malchiah, the son, the king's son, which was in the court of the guard, letting Jeremiah down by ropes. And there was no water, praise the Lord. There was no water in the cistern, but only mud. And Jeremiah sank in the mud. Now there is something that I can find there very interesting. No water in the, thankfully, there was no water in the, in the hall. So Jeremiah sank in the mud. Maybe if there was, if it was full of water, it would have been disaster for Jeremiah. But he sank there, but he remained uh, alive. So in verse 7 is where the man comes, Eben Melech. Now Eben Melech, the Ethiopian. Ethiopia is not in Europe. Ethiopian is not in America. Ethiopia is in Africa. Pray the Lord. Ethiopia is in Africa. Pray the Lord. Now, when... Eben Melech, the Ethiopian, a eunuch who was in the king's house, heard that they had put Jeremiah into the cistern. The king was sitting in the Benjamin gate. Eben Melech went from the king's house and said to the king, My lord, the king, these men have done evil in all that they, had, they did to Jeremiah the prophet by casting him into the cistern, and he will die there of hunger. For there is no bread left in the city. Then the king commanded, Eben Merech the Ethiopian, take 30 men with you from here and lift Jeremiah the prophet out of the cistern before he dies. Pray the Lord. Now, read on. It's a passage that I've given about Eben Merech, an African a eunuch, a eunuch, those of you who may, who may wish to know more, anybody who served in the king's palace before you would be offered an opportunity and you are male. And because the kings were polygamous, they had many women. Remember Solomon had how many? Okay, people count 730, 300, 1,000. And so if you offered to go and serve in the king's palace, they would castrate you first make you manless, so that actually you are able to be docile there, harmless there. Now, this man was a eunuch, but an African castrated, of course, with no hope of producing now. And so, he was a stranger, therefore, in Judah. He was not a, a Jew, but praise the Lord that he was in the king's palace. This is something that makes me, that made me smile, that an African, a non-Jew, a foreigner, but working in the king's palace, which was actually contrary to what had the, law, the laws that had been, the regulations that had been given in the Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 1, um, that castrated the people, castrated person is forbidden to enter the assembly of God's people. But this one was, you know, there is a way God orchestrates things. There's a way God turns things around, and I praise him for that. Now, there is a way God does his things for our good. Thankfully, this foreigner was called by God to work for Zedekiah, called Ebed Melech. And during his time, something has occurred. And because he was available in the king's palace, Jeremiah arrested. Jeremiah th intended to be harmed, thrown into the hall. Friends, you know that there are several holes in the Bible. But I just want to mention two. One of them is this Jeremiah Hall, where Jeremiah was lowered. Thankfully, there was no water, and therefore Jeremiah was just sunk in the mud and he was alive. Another hall that I want to remind you is the hall where Joseph was lowered. Do you remember Joseph in Genesis? By his own brothers, he was dipped there, he was lowered there, with intent to harm him. But thankfully, there came some Egyptians, Ishmaelites, that saved Joseph from the hall. Now, God does his things. There's a way God orchestrates matters intended for bad, but eventually things turn out for good. Now, this man, he was overcome, you know, 
by you know the love the care and the fear for the life of Jeremiah and so he set out his humiliation as a foreigner he would have kept quiet Esther in the Bible Hadassah also set herself aside by going to plead with the king for the welfare of the Jews. He boldly approached the king, just like other personalities like Esther that I've talked about. He boldly reproached the princesses. He said, these people have done bad. Killing Jeremiah, killing an innocent person, they have done bad. Praise the Lord. So he boldly, boldly, he boldly risked his life as an act of mercy. Praise the Lord. How many times have we done this? Risking our lives for the, as an act of mercy. He did it on behalf of prophet Jeremiah. Eben Merech, this man, leaves an example for us sitting aside whether he was a foreigner or no foreigner, castrated or not castrated, therefore he was a humiliated person by way of his circumstances, but he set them aside as a foreigner and said, this man must be saved. And approaching the king, how many people have approached leaders or people of influence on behalf of others? Let me address those that can be used for, this, for the sake of these others who are in danger, you approach. If you are nearer, somebody, someone wants maybe some help, but you are nearer the fountain of help. Will you do like Ebed Melech? Pray the Lord. Will you do like Ebed Melech? Ebed Melech pleaded for the cause of Jeremiah and so boldly risking his life for that reason. So Ebed Melech, received the prophet's reward by me understanding to help Jeremiah. Praise the Lord. He received the prophet's reward. Now let me check with you. Let me check. Go along with me. Matthew chapter 10 verse 41. Matthew 10 41. This is what um, the Bible says. We're talking about the prophet. I'm talking about Ebed Melech. Who comes into rescue the prophet? And Matthew 10, 41. And says, The one who receives a prophet, because he is a prophet, will receive a prophet's reward. Praise the Lord. And the one who receives a righteous person, because he's a righteous person, will receive a righteous person's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water, because he's a disciple, truly I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. Friends, the prophet's reward in Matthew. 10:41. Now, do something for the man of God. Do something for the cause. Now, here, Jesus was mentioning something about the rewards that we receive. Sometimes unknowing, you do something as an act of mercy, but God rewards you. Now, Bedi Melech, look, we are reading about him. That is a privilege. It's a wonderful thing. Because of what he did, we are reading about him. So do something today that will be remembered tomorrow. Do something today that will be remembered in another generation. Do something now that will have an impact on the readers and the hearers about your, about your life. And so this is important that Akira ben received the, the, the reward of the prophet. Now Ebed Melech makes life bearable for Jeremiah. He makes this brief appearance, but is a commanding appearance. 
And so it was during this time that actually Jeremiah was facing the most tumultuous times being thrown there and he saved the rescued life. So friends, something that actually Eben Melech lives with us. I've already mentioned very many things, but a few others. He shows honor in terms of chaos. He was not, over, not overcome by what was happening around, but he stood the ground and went to the king and said something for Jeremiah. Do you pick something from there? Showing honor for somebody, somebody's life. He was clear-headed. Remember, friends, that actually he was not bogged down by the circumstances that were. But he remained clear-headed and he went and talked to the king. Pray the Lord. His words, we read them in chapter 36. We read them when he was, when he went to the king, he went and he spoke very, very boldly. Now, these words that were spoken by Ebed Melech showed his character. Character that when he spoke, the king had. That when he appeared, the king saw. Pray the Lord. And when he said, the king trusted. Now, friends, let me mention here that like I've always said, do something today for a better tomorrow. Now, this man must have been a faithful servant, must have been a reputable servant. When he appeared before the king, the king could listen to him. The king could see him. The king could allow him in. And so what you do today, what you say today, your action is today, your action is now, could be relevant, could be useful in time to come. And so this is important for you. This is important for me as a person. Because everything that we do, we do it now, but it may be of relevance in the next moment, in the next week, in the next day, in the next year, in the next... Because you have developed your reputation with the people of, 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 of authority, of people of power, of people of influence. And so that when you appear, they will say, yes, he has come. He must be have some, something to say. Pray the Lord. When you appear before your boss, when you appear before your leader, when you appear before your supervisor, do they give you an ear? Do they listen to you? Do they look at you? Because when you come with the word, they will say, now he has come, but there should be something that is bringing him or her. And let us listen to what he says. In the meetings, have you heard people, some people shut down, say, no, immediately you stand up. Someone say, that one is not going to say anything good. Can you imagine? Now, what have you built for yourself? That actually, people will, you'll command, when you stand up and say, he is a person of substance. Ebeni Melech was a man, I think, because he was a eunuch, castrated person. He was a person of substance. He could stand out of the crowd. I pray for you that you stand out of the crowd, that whatever you speak, that whatever you do, would be credible before people. And so actually when they say yes, he says, he speaks, he says, yes, even by mere appearance, it's something good is coming about here. Now those who act wickedly with the moral failure, with the intent to harm, and they do evil, Praise the Lord in chapter 38 that this man rebuked them openly before the king. That they have done bad. In chapter 38, he, he said, King, these people have done, have done bad, have done wickedly. Have done bad, have done wickedly. You know? He says, no. So people who act wickedly, people whose moral failure leads others to harm, people who do evil, have to be rebuked. And we pray that God is going to raise men and women who rebuke evil before leaders, before their seniors, before their superiors, and say this is wrong. And being faithful, not intending to harm. Because actually there are some people who want to say that we speak the truth when they are full of malice. I don't think this man, Ebed Melech, was malicious. He was only pointing out, he was only rebuking what these people were doing, what the people had done, lowering Jeremiah, intending to kill Jeremiah, even when he had told the truth that had come from God. 
And so we need people without malice, without malice, without wickedness, but helping bring harmony, helping to save life of another person. Pray the Lord. And so Eben Melech, the man, the person, worked out a plan to save Jeremiah. I like the plan that he did. You see, when you, as you read chapter 38 on, in, in verse um, 10, the Bible says that then the king commanded Eben Melech, the Ethiopian, take 30 men with you from here and lift Jeremiah, the prophet, out of the system before he dies. Now, this is what he does. Verse 11. So Eben Melech took the men with him and went to the house of the king to a wardrobe of the, in the storehouse and took from their old rags and worn out clothes, which he let down to Jeremiah in the cistern by the ropes. Then Eben Melech, the Ethiopian, said to Jeremiah, Put the rags and the clothes between your armpits and the ropes. So Jeremiah did so. Then they drew Jeremiah up with the ropes and lifted him out of the cistern. And Jeremiah remained in the court with the guard. Pray the Lord. Now here is something that actually, um, if I didn't mention this, I think I would have done injustice. Reading this, that actually Eben Melech leaves us a lesson here first by working out a plan to serve somebody. So Eben Melech worked out a plan. Do you work out a plan to serve someone? Do we have a plan to serve somebody in our surrounding today, in our surrounding, working out a plan? Secondly, Eben Melech leaves us a lesson of Christian sympathy. What does he do? He uses the ropes. But the rope, you say, Jeremiah would put a rope, but it would cut him. And so he did something. So he leaves us a Christian sympathy. And um, we will read Romans chapter 12, verses 9 to 16. There's something actually Paul says there. Christian, the beauty of Christianity is sympathy. He knew that human life is valuable. People are valuable. So he, even when he was saving him, he had to do something to make life a little bit comfortable. He was really concerned when people devalued another person's life. We have people who are devaluing other people's lives in our society today. They are doing harm openly, devaluing life. Eben Melech leaves us an example, and the example goes to those that want to devalue other people's lives by doing harm to them. Now, he was concerned very, very much. Now, shall we have the similar concern for others? Having compassionate, being sympathetic, being benevolent to everyone. Friends, Eben Melech was a man of great influence, persuasive. I've already said this. And so shall we be of help, always endeavor to develop a good reputation. I've said that already. And this is of value later. You do it today to be of value tomorrow. You do it today. I've repeated this several times because of the, these personalities. But do it today for the value of tomorrow. And so, great service. Rescue another person from a pit of despair. Please, can you do it? Rescue somebody from the pit of despair, from, the, from a pit of agony. Now, what we do is important. Pray the Lord. What we do is important, but how we do it is equally important. Can I repeat? What we do is important. What you do to somebody is important, but how we do it is equally important. Now, as God is people, we must work hard to rescue. We must work hard to restore. We must have hard to encourage. We must work hard to help the faint-hearted. Lest we, we, we become a people of no influence at all. So, this is what... Ebed Melech did. He was helping Jeremiah pray the Lord. But how he did it was of great value as well. What he did was good, but how he did it was of great value. Now, can you go back and consider you are giving somebody money, a beggar on the street? Yes, thank you. But how you are doing it is important. Are you giving me a job? Yes. Thank you, but how you do it is important. 
Are you helping me? Are you helping another person? How you do it is important. Ebed Melech cushioned the ropes that Jeremiah would come out. There are some people who don't put cushions. They will just shout it. They just throw it. They just do it bluntly there. Actually causing even more harm. Even when you think that you are helping. So friends, Ebed Melech benefits us really. And he leaves us an example. He helped Jeremiah. And eventually God also looked at him. And he also escaped the impending disaster. As you read chapter 39, verses 16 to 18. He was delivered. And so by the help that you offer to others, there's a reward that awaits you. Like Jesus puts it in Matthew chapter 25 when he said, I was sick and you visited me. Now, as you visit someone, you are putting on your account. As you help somebody, you are putting on your account. As you do something, an act of mercy, you are putting something on your account. Ebedi Melech did good. And how he did it stands out importantly. So friends, let us get out there and do something. Thank you so much that you do something, but how you do it is valuable. If we had the time all the time, we would explain this. What we do is important, but how we do it is equally important. It would take us another episode. But just think about it. Pray about it as you help someone, as you stand in to be of help to another person. Is it at a workplace? Is it at home? Is it anywhere? Now, how you do it also counts. Not only what you are doing, not only what you are doing, but also how you are doing it. So, Ebeni Melech leaves me a great lesson. May he leave you a great lesson that we stand together with those that are truly agonizing and God's people, like Jeremiah was, we also are. Shall we stand with one another? We have talked about these people. And may God help us to draw our lessons in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>